this is the 11th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to talk about membership and identity operators in python so the membership operators let you check whether a value is present in a set or not right so if you have a string and if you want to check whether there is a word in a string or not you know something that you want to look for then you use the in membership operator and you know that's that's what we're going to talk about and that's what we're going to check out right now so i'll create a string and i'll call it str1 and I'll, uh, you know, put some text in it, like, uh, I have a lazy dog, right? And I'll press the enter key to create my string. I can check whether it has been created or not. So there you go. I see the text in the string. I have a lazy dog. So now let's say if I want to check whether the word dog is present in my string or not, then I type in dog within double quotes or single quotes, right? Because I'm making a string check, a comparison between a string and another string. So I type in dog within double quotes and then the in operator, right? This is the in membership operator. And then I'll type in the name of my string, which is str1. And there you go. I see true as the result. And that's because the word dog is present in my string. If I check something else like lion in str1, I get false, right? So what the in operator does is it checks whether the characters that you've uh, mentioned within quotes, you know, whether these characters are there in the string or not, you know, it doesn't really care whether the word dog exists separately. Like for instance, in this string, the word dog exists separately. But then even if we had the word dogmatic in the string, instead of just having dog, you know, we would have got true as a result. So, so you know, it checks whether the characters are there and also whether the characters are there in the sequence that you've specified. So it's not necessary that, you know, there, there, you know, there can't be any characters after the character G in a word in the string, you know, there could be more characters after it, but then since it found D O G in this sequence in the string, it gave us true, right? And, uh, the innovator works on uh, list tuples and dictionaries too. So, you know, let's create a list and see how the innovator works on a list. And, uh, I'll give my list, uh, you know, numeric values. And of course we'll have to use square brackets to create it. So, you know, the values that I, I'll give to it are one and three and, uh, 19 and 32. Let me give it a couple more values of so 48 and 77, right? And uh, if I want to see whether 65, the number 65 is present in my list or not, I'll type in 65 in the name of my list, my list. I press the enter key, I get false because 65 is not there in the list. And if I check uh, with something that's there in the list, let's say if I want to check 19 in my list, I see true, right? Because 19, the number 19 is there in the list. So that's it about uh, membership operators. Uh, next, we're going to talk about the identity operator. So the identity operators compare memory locations of uh, objects and, uh, you know, they tell you whether two variables have the same value as well as the same data type, right? So I'll uh, illustrate this with the help of an example again. So I'll create two variables. The first one, A, I'll give it the value of 42 and the next variable, uh, B, and I'll give this to the value 42, but not the number 42, but you know, I enclose the uh, characters 42 within single code. So this will be a string value, right? And uh, if I want to see whether A and B are the same or not, I'll type in A and then is and then B, right? So this is the is identity operator. When I press the enter key, I get false as a result, because even though A and B have identical values, you know, 42 and 42, but then the data types of A and B are different. So A is a numeric variable, whereas B is a string variable. Right? So that's what the is operator does. It checks whether the values are, uh, whether the values are same as well as, you know, whether data types are same. And if both conditions evaluate to true, only then it gives you true as a result. Otherwise it gives you false. So in Python, how it happens is like when you create a variable, like for instance, when we gave the value 42 to A, an object 42 was created and then, you know, A was linked to it, right? So, or we can say that 42 was referenced by A. And uh, when we created the variable B, a string object 42 was created and then B was linked to, you know, the string object. So, you know, even though they have the same values 42 and 42, you know, they both are pointing to different objects. So that's why the is operator is going to give you false. And if I create another variable C and uh, give it the value 42, the new numeric, uh, you know, the number 42. And if I check 
whether A is uh, the same as C or not, I'll get true because here the values are the same as well as the data types are the same. And uh, the counterpart of is, is, is not. And what that does is it, it basically checks whether, you know, either the values are different or whether the data types are different. So, you know, if I would run is not on uh, between A and B, then I'll get true, right? Because in this case, uh, they both have different data types. So that's it about membership and identity operators in Python. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about operator precedence.